All right. Well, this is Michael Brainerd, and welcome and good morning, everybody. We'll um, go through a presentation to describe sort of what the Accelerate Forum program is, how it works, and some of the outcomes. Uh, before I get started, Jessica, is there any technical um, things that you see on your end or any words of advice for our uh, participating members that you could share? Yeah, so if you have a question, there's a Q&A box. You can use a chat box to put all your questions in there or simply raise your hand and I will let Michael know that you have a question. And there will be some room after, sometime after the presentation, after the webinar. So um, whatever you feel free to do, we'll just go from there. All right, great. So let's get into it. First of all, thank you for taking time out of your day. This certainly will not take the full hour. Please expect that maybe I'll speak for about 20 minutes, plus or minus, leaving plenty of time for some Q&A at the end. Um, I'll start by saying, if we slip to the next slide, um, the Accelerate Forum program has had, um, if you take Accelerate, what we do at organizations, plus the many forums we've done in Texas and California, we've had nearly 1,000 people go through this program at some point since 2010. I'm uh, very proud of the program. It's won an award, uh, an international award, as well as a Stevie Award for sort of being innovative. Um, the reason we're proud of the program is it sort of is a combination of many different types of executive development. So while you're looking at this slide, I'll kind of describe what's behind this slide. Many of you on this call will have heard of Center for Creative Leadership. Um, or it's programs like that. They're psychologically based programs meant to enhance your awareness and uh, self-awareness and emotional intelligence. There are academic based programs, more of mini MBAs like Kellogg or Stanford or Harvard produce around executive development certificates. And then there are internally based programs, competency based programs where an organization like IBM or Intel will have their own leadership university. What we've attempted to do with Accelerate is blend those three approaches, the MBA, the psychological, and the competency-based. Competency is, is interesting, right? Because we're not confined by an organization with a forum. So we leverage some of the great work that Egon Zender and McKinsey have done around what are real portable, high-performing executives competent in. We looked at the portions of MBA programs that competent, portable executives have and we've looked at some of the strong emotional intelligence and psych-based work and brought it together into a program. That program has four basic components to it. You're looking at the core component here. Um, the first component are what we call the instructor-led modules. And these will be five modules starting at the end of February, one per month. So it's a full day. In this case, it's in Carlsbad, California. Um, we've done it in the Bay Area, we've done it in Texas, and depending on the mix of our cohort, we may move around. Maybe we have uh, a bunch of participants from the LA area, maybe we move to Orange County for one particular module. As we have it planned today, we'll have all five modules in Carlsbad, California, and our team at Brainerd Strategy would be happy to help anybody with logistics, hotel, air, um, not paying for it necessarily, but certainly help planning and making it easy for you guys. Um, I'll walk through the modules quickly. Before you come into module one, um, you'll experience sort of the second component of our program, which are assessments. Jessica, if you could flip down a slide real quick and then we'll come back to this. Optional for you, we can run a 360 feedback process for you using our platform and our 360. If 360 is something that would be a little too invasive for your organization or you don't want to go, go through a 360 or you've already gone through a 360, certainly not mandatory at all, but certainly something we offer. The three assessments below that we would strongly recommend, the Myers-Briggs gets at your behavioral style, emotional intelligence gets at your emotional intelligence the e using the EQI. Uh, side note, emotional intelligence is one of the highest sort of a corollaries to executive performance in terms of assessments that we know of, emotional intelligence as well as critical thinking skills, as well as personality or type. And then finally, the Strengths Finder. Many of you will have heard of the Strengths Finder, read the book. Uh, it's an opportunity 
to sort of find out where we're strong and leverage where we're strong. So if we go back up, Jessica, to the modules, in advance of the February, I forget the exact date, but we'll send that out or post it. It's the last week in February. We would invite you through links to take those assessments. So once you register, each of those assessments takes about 15 or 20 minutes, and then we would be willing to provide uh, the feedback through an executive coach. That coach is the third component of the program. So while you're looking at the instructor-led modules, that's the primary. Secondary is you get a full suite of assessments. And the third is you get an executive coach to walk through the program with you. So the facilitator, in this case me, will run the modules and then either Elijah Say or Jessica Montenegro, who's on these, these guys are on the call, will act as your executive coaches. And how that works is they'll schedule a meeting with you, either a webinar, a face-to-face, -face, or a phone, to go through all of your assessments. Distill from your assessments your own individual development plan. We would encourage you to share that with anybody in your ecosystem you like, but we definitely would like you to bring that to module one. What you see on the bottom there is the fourth leg of the program, which are applied learning projects, and I'll talk about those in just a minute. So you can see the program doesn't just start at the end of February. It really is intended to start as soon as you register through the assessments and the meeting with the executive coach. The executive coach then will be with you through the entire duration of the program, and in many cases, from a practical experience standpoint, will also support you beyond the program. Confidential, just in time, telephone based, pick up the phone. They will have gone through all of the material in the program, gotten to know you quite well, and can be a great resource for you in your leadership life. Let me walk through the modules just at a very high level. Module one is all about you. Uh, to become an enterprise leader. Let, let me pause there for a moment. One of the primary reasons I built this program was when I looked at the market, I didn't see the right blend of psychological competency and academic-based programs, so I wanted to get that in place. The second thing I wanted to do was really get after the question that Jim Collins asked in Good to Great, which is, what makes a level five leader? The definition of a level five leader is, how can I affect an environment when I'm not physically present? How does one do that? So this program was really meant to say, how do we build level five type of leaders? And I know the book is old. We wrote the program in 2008. We've been iterating it as we roll it out each time. That was the original impetus. Module one really challenged us is to say, is my emotional intelligence where it needs to be? Am I aware of my cognitive biases? Do I have the kind of self-awareness and self-critical mechanisms that allow me to learn and grow? So it really is about you and how you will transform and continue to evolve and develop to become what we call an enterprise leader or a person who's capable of leading other leaders and building out their career toward an executive level. Module two builds upon that and says, okay, let's move away from you and create what we call executive infrastructure. How do we think about ourselves as it relates to vision and strategy and culture and values-based leadership? And how do we set the environment in place so that we don't have to be sort of kneecap to kneecap to lead? What are the operating mechanisms that an executive, a highly effective executive would put in place to actually lead so that we don't have to work from a behavioral standpoint quite as hard? Module three, talks about coaching and driving high performance in any environment, really working with others. So now we're moving away from you and we're interacting with other humans. We're learning a lot about work motivation, human motivation, org behavior, and coaching. Module four talks about how do I think strategically? How do I think about groups and systems and teams? And how do I really think strategically, not just about driving performance, at the individual level or working with specific humans, but how do I think about strategic acumen, thinking inside of my organization, outside of my organization? How do I think about myself as an executive beyond just my team or even my function? Module five, we're gonna talk about how do I drive change, how do I drive innovation, and how do I really put things in place where I don't have to double back? How do I become an effective uh, executive presenter? How do I think about driving change and continuous improvement throughout my career for me, my team, and my org? 
We have very specific models and approaches and methods. One of the compliments we'll get after this program is that the toolkit you'll leave with allows you to have almost your own leadership book as you move forward. The idea that after the program, you still have access to your coach, we can reassess in the case that you might be interested in reassessing via 360 or reassessing in any way. We usually create great relationships with the people that go through the program. More importantly, I'll say this, you will develop relationships with people in other organizations, may not even be local to you, that it will become very easy to have a network where you have an instant peer coach. So somebody in Dallas can pick up the phone, talk to somebody in San Diego about a specific performance problem they're facing or a strategic challenge they're facing or a problem with a new boss. You guys that come through the program will ask you to be vulnerable with one another. And, we're gonna, and, and what we find organically is that we create this cool cohort effect. We've run about maybe eight of these forums. I may be misspeaking on number seven or eight of them. And people years from now, I email to say hello to or whatever, and they'll say, hey, I just talked to Carol and she changed jobs. Mike, I didn't know if you knew, you might want to let her know. So it's kind of a cool external network outside of your company of people who've been through the same experience, have similar models, have similar learning, and uh, can be really helpful to one another. The last thing I'll say here is in module three, I'll ask you to work in smaller groups with one another, groups of three or four, to take some component of our program and apply it to a challenge you're having in your business. And we have to play with this a little bit. There's no one formula, but we'll take a, a mini case study, but instead of an external case study, like reading about Exxon Mobil, for example, we'll take something that's gone inside of your organization. Certainly confidentiality has to be uh, kept intact, so it should be a pretty generic problem. We'll ask the three or four people work on that through a business framework that I'll offer and it's meant to be a problem-solving, decision-making solution exercise, should take no more than a couple, three hours between modules three, four, and five, and we'll present those action learning findings in module five. One example of this was we had an HR executive going through the program as a participant a couple, couple of years ago, and her CEO was challenging her to come up with a um, due diligence checklist for HR. Um, she went online and found some resources, but we actually turned that into an applied learning project where we said, well, there's a general counsel in the program and there's also a business development person in the program. Why don't the three of you get together and come up with a best in class sort of due diligence approach for HR? It took no more than three or four hours. They got to work together. They presented back to the cohort in module five and that became of great value for that person's organization. So what we're really trying to get at here is building some individual benefit and development for our leaders, providing a cohort or peer benefit for you as you go through the program, and then ultimately, hopefully, bring some benefit back to your organization, not through your own performance and, and, and enhanced development, but also through, in some cases, real material gains for the organization. So four components in summary, instructor-led modules, assessments, coaching, and the applied learning projects. That's really what the program is, and it should last over five months, and usually the program nets in those three outcomes, which are individual, peer, and organization. Just a touch about coaching. We start by debriefing. We'll support you through your individual development plan, and then we can meet with you as you want. We can set up regular meetings via telephone or Skype, we can not engage with coaching. It's totally optional. It's meant to be helpful to you. Um, if you've not been through executive coaching before, um, it's, it's a little, it, it's, it's a wonderful individual way. So each of us on this uh, webinar today have different developmental strengths, different developmental opportunities. A coach is meant to get right in close with you and be that just in time customized person that can bring tools, methods, insights, and challenges to you to help advance your development. I always ask people, take these five or six months as a bit of a pit stop where we really wanna sharpen the blade so that we don't have to work so hard the rest of our career and we can expand our leadership effectiveness. And coaching is a wonderful way to get right in close to where your actual strengths and opportunities are and get some of those challenges addressed quickly. We'll support the program as we mentioned with the uh, applied learning projects. 
we'll certainly talk more about these as we get into the program. In some cases, again, like coaching, you may find that you don't have time to engage with this or you don't have a, a topic that's useful. Again, none of this is mandatory, but as we get into this, this is a learning process where we try to take a real life situation rather than using an external case study for learning. So that's what we're trying to do with the Applied Learning Projects. I've never had anybody opt out of them. We'll always scope them such that they're very doable. Again, you can, all, all have heard the term scope creep. You can take a business challenge and boy, it can become overwhelming. We certainly won't let that happen. We'll get that thing right down to a core business question and apply some business problem solving and decision making and analysis to it. We can move on. You'll leave the program with so many resources, um, you'll be overwhelmed. <laughs> so the resources tab on the left that you see, that will be just truly a reference list for every piece of content in the program. Some of the content in the program is from the public domain. Some of the content in the program is proprietary to us. It's all yours when you leave the program. We encourage you to share it with your direct reports, your bosses, your colleagues. We would like you to expand the learning. Um, a side note on that, pretty purpose-driven around here. I, I was raised uh, with humble backgrounds, and I watched my mother come home when I was a kid and just get beat up by really bad managers and bosses, right? So if you can share this with anybody, maybe one learning, one model, and help leaders be more effective, it ultimately helps people have a better experience at work. So use these resources, share them. Let's use an example here. We use, um, when we think about doing an assessment of an org, we think about using many techniques, but we don't just wing it, right? As an executive, we can use shortcuts and those shortcuts are actually better than us just thinking sort of creatively. An example, the 7S framework that McKinsey put forward, a way to analyze the strategy, the structure, the skill sets, the systems, right? The shared values. These are ways that an executive can think about assessing an organization to get it from its current state to some better desired state. That's in that resource bucket there. So there are things from the public domain. There are things that we hold proprietary that we brought together to support the program. These are methods, tools, shortcuts. Um, we, we're not often given the three-step answer to anything, but as an executive, we're thinking about frameworks to solve problems. We have a notebook there that in the gray, we have that white tab on the, on the right there with that little blue thing, that's a USB, a lot of things in there. Leadership Development Toolkit, we'll have booklets for you. For an example, when, when you lead a large-scale change initiative, there's a new set of rules and a new set of thinking that has to be put in place. We have a change toolkit that we offer you. So you'll leave the program, not just with knowledge and insight and new peer relationships, but you'll also leave with a set of tools, methodologies and frameworks that we've collated over the 20 years we've been in business into what we think really are best practices for executive development. As you go through the program, you'll be sharing models and TED Talks and white papers with one another as well, because we certainly don't have the market cornered on the best information but there's an awful lot of information out there. So we try to bring back together and leverage one another for what we think are the best materials. Um, so we can move on from there. If you want, we would like, we think it's good and healthy to invite your manager into the program. And how that looks is two, two, that looks two, uh, two ways. One is we'll hand you a manager discussion guide. So each module, here are the topics that we talked about, and here are some debrief questions or discussion starters that you could have with a peer or a boss or a mentor in the workplace. Many of you will have mentors or have skip levels. Please, um, we, we don't want this to be sort of in a dark closet. We want this to be promulgated. So use these discussion guides. How about downward with your team? We have had many people come through the program and say, I didn't use this with my boss, but once a month I sat down with my team and I simply debriefed the topics and got a discussion going for their development. I thought that's wonderful. So it's called a manager discussion guide. You could also just call it a discussion guide, but we package the information in a succinct way to start a dialogue. Finally, 
Um, we'd love for you to register. You can email any of us. Uh, you've got our emails, I assume, through the uh, how you got here today. Um, you can call, you can email, you can uh, reach us in any way you like. Um, we will offer discounts and or scholarships in some cases. We have folks in nonprofits. We have folks that are in organizations that maybe aren't performing financially where they want, but they really want like their people developed. So we're willing to be flexible in any way we can with our forum offering. Our forum offering is just that. It's meant to be for people from multiple organizations. We call it a public offering. You will be in a cohort group in this case with somebody who's a senior director at Ingram Micro or a vice president at Qualcomm, or maybe the CEO of a nonprofit. Uh, the, the qualification here is we have to be sort of at a leader level. We are leading people and we are expanding our career and hopefully moving into more of an enterprise leadership role. That's about it. If there are other circumstances that would preclude somebody from registering, we'd be happy to work with you in terms of helping out. But uh, very, very purpose driven here. Um, I've heard from multiple, multiple people in cohorts. Um, no one's ever had a negative experience. Um, all I can say is it's fun. It's interactive, and frankly, it can be very challenging. We, we will, I will specifically, take very seriously the job of developing people, and development doesn't always mean you're exactly comfortable with where you are. And so through our coaching and through the work in the modules with your peers and with me, we'll create great safety, we'll allow for vulnerability, and we'll also challenge a bit. That's our role, and that happens sometimes through the coaching or the modules. But at the end of the day, this is a fun, tier one best in class development program that we're very, very proud of. And I hope to uh, either answer questions now and or uh, be available via email or phone call to follow up with anybody who's taken the time out of their day to be on this webinar. Um, so with that, I'll conclude and invite anyone to raise a hand, ask a question or type in or however that happens. So thank you. Good morning. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm fantastic, thank you. So without knowing exactly what the dates are, what happens if we had to miss one of the modules because of a prior engagement? Good question. Um, so we will publish the dates. I think we already have them. So we should publish them like ASAP so that we can avoid that. And the answer to your question is, you, here's how we've handled it in the past. Um, we've asked that your executive coach will meet with you probably for about 90 minutes to walk through the core learning components from that module. Now, of course, you'll miss some of the peer interaction and peer learning, but how we've handled in the in the past anyway is that myself or the coach would really sit down with you for an hour and 90 minutes and walk you through the content. The reason why, is not only for your advantage, but we also don't want to disadvantage the group in the next modules because they kind of string together. So yeah. we will not leave you behind. We will catch you up. And, and I, there's probably a couple of ways to do it, but I'm just telling you how we've done it in the past. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good question. Thank you. Hi, right. uh, Michael. It looks like we have a question um, that would be, what are the criteria for scholarships? So we don't have a specific, I haven't sat down and written down a specific um, criteria. The reason I even put the word scholarship in there is I really did not like, um, I'm just gonna be very candid, um, in the past hearing, gosh, I would love to do it, but my can't, company can't pay for, for it right now. So. I thought about the idea of a scholarship in, in that maybe we could discount the registration fee for specific cases where there was incredibly high need or interest, but not the ability to pay. So I frankly don't have an answer other than I would love to discuss in private ways to be supportive of somebody who would want and benefit from this program, but not be able to get a company to sponsor the registration fee. So, so 
I, I apologize for not having a very precise answer, but I, I want to be flexible. I also want to be fair to the cohort as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a gray line that I would specifically handle with anybody who would want to be interested in having a follow-up phone call. Thank you. Michael, looks like we have another question, and that is, can you explain why developing executives is different than any other leadership program? Absolutely. Um, first of all, I'll be happy to send out a white paper I wrote on this a couple of years ago about the difference between leadership development and executive development. In short, the answer kind of goes like this. Leadership development has become a catch-all for taking somebody who's not led and teaching them the basics of leadership. In many cases, that's taken the form of more management development. If you double click on that, that means I am skill building. We are teaching you the basics of goal setting, coaching, feedback, measurement, building teams, putting plans in place. This is typical leadership development. While our program has elements of skill building in it, it is not skill building. Executive development implies to me that I've been developed as a manager or a leader and I've been managing and leading. However, there is a material difference because at the executive or enterprise level, I'm no longer leading one-on-one -on -one or chest to chest. I'm leading a system. I'm leading a function, a group, a department. So I'm not leading a group of seven or 17 direct reports. I'm leading a group of 400 to 700, maybe only 80 or 90, but I'm leading people who have the potential or actually leading others. So now it's beyond people management and myself. It's much more transformative. It's how do I think about the ecosystem? How do I think about the implications externally as well as internally. How do I think about value, relevance, and risk? Well, when I'm a manager or even a frontline leader, I don't think that much about value, relevance, and risk. The metaphor I would use is leaders and managers implement a budget. Executive or enterprise leaders formulate the budget based on the strategy. So it's a different level of thinking. When you get right down to it, and I'll stop here, Executive development's even more difficult because we have to create a learning gap, right? Most executives at the director level, even going up, pretty well formed, been there, done that. Why do I have to develop? Well, there's a different juncture that many of us don't get over to really get the difference between leading an enterprise or a system versus leading a team or a group. That's the real difference is how do I lead at the enterprise or system level, still keeping in my people skills, but upskilling and developing more sophisticated ways of thinking about myself, more sophisticated ways of thinking about the enterprise, more sophisticated ways to think about the implications of my leadership. Um, so when I develop executives, either through coaching or group, I often have to unwind some existing beliefs about leadership to get that gap going, to get that, gosh, I thought I knew what I was doing, but th th this way would be shorter, faster, better, and this way would allow me to think broader, deeper, and into the future more. So there's a lot there. We're happy to share a white paper with you that I've written, but executive development is much more difficult, frankly, because it's not just skill building. It's much about transformation, and it's much about the enterprise and ecosystem. All right, Michael, looks like we have another one. Um, are coaches available to work with me outside of the program? Absolutely. So once you are assigned your coach through the program, you have that coach for six months. Um, if you want to have that coach meet with you face to face um, and you want to talk about something that's not related to the program, um, Elijah, Jessica, myself, we've been coaching for years, decades. This coach is a primarily meant to help you with your development plan and help you get through the program. However, you can use that coach in any way you like going through the program. I will put a caveat on that. Our executive coaches are focused on business, leadership, and strategy. None of us are life coaches. Um, none of us, I mean, we may know something about fitness, but our, our scope of coaching is really about business, leadership, and strategy. 
If you would like to meet with your coach about some topic not related to the program, by all means, please do it. The coach is meant to help your development broadly. And if I didn't answer that question correctly, please let me know. And um, I believe there's a follow-up to a previous question. How will I be transformed and what are the outcomes? Well, uh, there's a lot to that question. So I'll talk generally. Um, in module one, we will talk about your assessments, your belief about yourself, and a process to continue to challenge your belief about yourself. Getting rid of some of your biases and the way that you've protected yourself is a primary driver of effective leadership. There's a study uh, that goes along with the emotional intelligence literature that talks about a self-critical leader is more effective in getting followership or engagement. So, okay, how do you develop a mechanism to become self-critical without going through this program? We'll go through that. So an example in a very specific and practical way is you'll leave this program where two to three times a year, you've built in a muscle that says, how do I get critical feedback specifically about my leader, leadership? We're not just telling you to be self-critical. We're actually going to walk you through an exercise to become self-critical. That transforms you because most of you guys on this call, me, all of us, we don't go out into our daily world looking to be wrong or looking to be fallible or looking to be weak. However, the literature would suggest that the more self-protective or ego-driven or insecure leaders are, the less impactful they are influencing other human beings. Okay, that's easy to know intellectually, but how do you actually build the process to become self-critical? That's a skill that not a lot of books will talk about, but you'll leave this program with. You'll be transformed in that you'll be looking for opportunities to be self-critical. You'll have a mechanism and a process to do it. You'll look at yourself differently. I can assure you that most people leave module one understanding how their cognitive biases have given them a screwed up view of themselves. And now that they understand that a little bit more deeply, they can look at themselves differently. This is another example of how you'll be transformed. Um, there's a number of, in each module, we're getting that transformation. I could go all the way to module five and talk about some strategic thinking skills and talk about stories about how people have called me back and said, you know, I just used this one strategic thinking skill and I actually feel differently in the room because not only am I thinking strategically, but by using those particular questions, other people are allowed to think more strategically. So there's a bunch of examples, but we work very hard in this design of this program to make it a transformative process for you. Um, and it can be deep or it can be less deep, but we're moving in that direction in all cases. I hope those examples were illustrative enough and, and helpful. All right, Michael, I think that wraps up all of our questions. Well, I hope if you've taken the time to join today, you'll follow up with an email or, or a phone call to our office to maybe set up, if you wanna get more individual questions answered, please feel free to do that. If you wanna register, I'd be super excited to meet you and work with you over the period of the next couple months. And if you have any more, um, any, any more questions, don't hesitate to reach out to any member of our team, including me. Just real slowly here, M Brainerd at BrainerdStrategy.com. That's M Brainerd at BrainerdStrategy.com. If you're on this call and you're outside of California, you want to meet face to face, we have Morgan in Texas. Um, we can do a webinar or a face to face meeting. His email is M O'Brien at BrainerdStrategy.com. And then a person who's on this call that keeps all of us uh, sane is C Kennedy, Claudia at ckennedy at brainerdstrategy.com. So uh, hit the website, hit any of our emails. Look forward to talking to you and hopefully meeting and working with you here over the next coming months. Thank you, everyone.